Hey guys, I think we are live. Let me pop out the channel here and make sure I can see the uh, the actual uh, chat. Make sure the hey volume is down. And sorry about that. There we go. Pop out the chat and hopefully we will see. There we go. Hey, Hoagie. Can you hear me okay, Hoagie? Greetings. Hey, Chris. Thanks for stopping by. Just checking on the uh, channel up high here. That's what I'm looking up. Make sure everybody's popping in. How's the uh, audio and video? Looking at a couple of bottles. Uh, I warmed up earlier uh, watching the Scotch Four Dummies. Thanks, guys, for the shout out. And uh, I like moderating the channel. It's no big deal. I appreciate the uh, opportunity to do it. And uh, hopefully, I'll get a chance to see you guys again. It's too bad you guys uh, can't come out for an expo uh, in DC. Um, if you can, uh, definitely let me know. I'm going to try to hit a couple of here coming in. Um, I believe it's uh, March or April. Uh, there's going to be a couple in DC. So uh, we'll have to do something then. If not, then maybe some other time. I know Mark gets to travel a bit for his job. Uh, we both work for the government. So uh, maybe uh, let me know when you're back and we'll hit Jack Rose or something like that. Anyway, oh, thanks for stopping by, Dram Dude and uh, Claire. Good to see you. Uh, I'm in D.C. Uh, well, I work in D.C. I live in Severna Park, Maryland, which is part of uh, – it's like um, eight miles north of uh, Annapolis. It's like 12, 15 miles south of Baltimore uh, in between the two cities, uh, kind of its own – it's not rural, but it's not a big town or anything like that. It's unincorporated. Um, thanks, Tom. R., uh, thanks for stopping by, too. Uh, I warmed up tonight with a proven, just, you know, you can't go wrong with this bottle. And you can tell that I've already had a little fun last uh, few uh, showings. So, <laughs> uh, Holland Park 18 is a, a definite great deal. Last uh, New Year's Eve, I was able to do the 25, which was everything that 18 has, plus a lot of good tropical notes in there. So, Definitely worth your time. I, the price tags, I know hefty on a 25. It might be one of those that if you ever got a really big raise or, you know, uh, maybe have a kid, that type of thing. But if you have any excuse to for, go for the 25, I, I have to recommend it. But the 18 is definitely an affordable, it's more affordable. Uh, I won't say it's affordable for everybody, but it's a, a more affordable dram, that's for sure. Tonight, we're going to look at a couple of uh, different drams. And the first one, the reason I, I actually chose this earlier, it's funny because uh, when there was the big um, the uh, round table, a lot of the reviewers were getting together and talking about their favorites for 2017. And um, a lot of the, uh, you know, it was very a positive round table, which I, I can't, you know, knock it by any means, you know, that's, that's what a lot of reviewers do. They, they typically um, don't like to bash, you know, um, other distilleries and whatever. And I can appreciate that. I'm not out to bash anybody, but I will tell you when I have a dram that is not satisfactory. It's subpar. It just doesn't do it. But that doesn't mean that the whole distillery has a problem. It just means that this one particular offering, I didn't subjectively get something out of it. I think it's part of my... I don't want to say job, but part of the fun is to try things and tell you what I experience out of it. And if I love it, you know, I'll definitely let you know. And if I'm not really into it, it doesn't mean you're not going to like it, but I'll tell you why I don't like something. Like a, a good example is I love Bunnehaven. Bunnehaven is one of my favorite distilleries. I love the 12. It's a 4.25 out of 5. The 18 is a 5 out of 5, 4.75, somewhere around there. Um, and uh, I love the Marsala Cast 13. Uh, it's funny because Scotch Test Dummies, uh, Scott uh, was uh, gracious enough to do a sample, and uh, I had it at the Whiskey Expo with the Scotch Four Dummies, loved it, and I went out and got my own bottle sitting back there somewhere. <laughs> so um, that's a great one too. But the Kalbanach was not one of my favorite deals, and it maybe it's because I know Pete's not their main function, but. Um, the P wasn't the problem. I, the finish just wasn't there for me. I like a strong flavor with a strong finish. That's why I love Arbeg. I love Lafroig, Lagavulin. They all have really great finishes. Um, with that one, not so much. And I know they have a Krokmona, 
which is um, a travel retail only heated version. I'd love to try it. It's a one liter bottle, but you can only get it overseas. And I do not go international um, traveling. So um, that might be a tough one to get. They do have the toy check, which is a T O I T E A C H. Um, that you don't see very much. I do know where I can get a bottle of it for about 70 bucks. So that might be a, uh, uh, one to pick up, but I, it didn't get good as good ratings as Kavanaugh did, so we'll have to see how that goes. But anyway, uh, the reason I bring this up is because I did have uh, this year, um, I'll talk about one of the distilleries that I did not, one of the bottlings I didn't care for, which was Gervon, G I R V A N. Now, they might have some grain whiskey that some people love. Uh, I think it's primarily used in, in uh, blends. Um, if I take a guess, it was uh, we're hitting all these distilleries. Some of my friends are we're trading bottles and we're trying to split things five ways so we can hit every distillery in Scotland. Uh, we're going to probably approach that goal, I think, by next year, summer in. Um, anyway, but Gervon was a very extremely waxy. Uh, it was like if you could picture drinking candle wax, and no one I know would do that just for the sake of doing it. but. That's what it was like to me. It was it was so waxy, and it had this major sawdust character to it. It just it just to me wasn't appealing at all. And I'll be the first one to tell people, you know, it's my experience. You know, take it or leave it. Um, and then when it comes to this bottle, um, I have a sample of the Nika. Uh, I believe you pronounce it Takasuru Pure Malt Blend. It's forty three percent, and uh, this is a non age statement. They used to have a. Uh, they might even still have a 12 and a, uh, some other ages, but a lot of the uh, Japanese whiskeys are uh, having problems like the Scottish ones where they're running out of uh, product and having to do NASs. So unfortunately, I think this is why I wasn't too uh, keen on it. I did pour a little earlier. I had a sip, uh, so we're going to replenish the stock a little bit here. And uh, I have let it sit out for quite a while. It's 43%, so I'm not going to damage it with anything uh, yet. I will try it with a couple of drops just to give it its, you know, another chance. But I have done this before. This other bottle we're going to look at, the Kilholm and Red Wine Matured, I have not touched yet. It's unopened. So that'll be the final, the finale, I guess we'll call it. Let's see how that goes. That I'm very looking forward to. Um, there's only one thing that scares me. I'll get into that later. But back to the Nika. Now this guy, and I'm looking over here at some, some, um, not my own notes, but uh, notes from the distillery that uh, it's dried with peat, 100% marley, 100% uh, malted barley from more than uh, one distillery. Um, I, I don't speak Japanese, so bear with me, but Miyagiko uh, was one, and I believe, um, trying to see here, Yorichi is the other one. Um, the whiskeys were aged in different ca cast types, including X Sherry. Now, the thing about this one, it reminds me of when I did like a lot from Nika, and I do like Nika's distillery. I've had their coffee grain whiskey, which is absolutely outstanding, and I've had Nika whiskey from the barrel, also one of their outstanding offering. Uh, the nose on this is great. That that's why I'm not going to you know completely knock it. It has really great, um, like a fruit cocktail, not the canned crap, but you know, a good fruit cocktail of uh, strawberries and raspberries and grapes. And it has some floral properties in there. Um, very sweet uh, smelling confection, sugar, that type of thing is going on. Now, so, you know, you're excited by the nose and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm down with this. But when you get into the palate, that's when things fall apart. And I'm, I'm sure that it's because of the age and it's, um, you know, and 43% is a, it's a low ABV too. And that's not going to help it a whole lot. So if this was, you know, the 12 year and if it was 46%, I think we'd be talking a different type of dram here, but It's got some nice notes to it, but it's it's very coinly sweet, almost like um, maraschino cherries. You know, the juice that's in that that bottle, that's 
definitely in the palate here. Um, I mean, I take that and use it as grenadine sometimes for if you're making a cocktail, that kind of thing. It's that sweet. Um, I mean, you could taste a little bit of the peat. It's 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 there, but the finish is negative. It's zero. It's minus five. It's not there. There's nothing after the fact. I mean, it, it's so sad because it's it's got potential, and I think that's why. I'm not sure what the price point on this is, but um, oh, um, I'll get to that hoagie in a second. Uh, I'm not sure what the price point on this guy is, but. Uh, if it's 20 bucks, 30 bucks more for the 12 year versus this uh, NAS, I would pay all night and day the 20, 30 dollars to have a great finish and a better palette. That's just, you know. It's weird. It's like, um, I think it might be a little better than the first time I had. It. I think oxidation does help this, this glass um, as far as the palette's concerned. So, I man, getting more of the. The breakdown of the sugar, I can distinguish like the, like some brown sugar and some uh, like light brown sugar, not the dark stuff, but the light brown sugar and some um, and some spices, like light spice, not not heavy uh, cinnamon or anything like that, but some uh, maybe salt, but it's still not a. Uh, not quite there, I think, as much of a. Uh, I like, I definitely like the Nika from the whiskey from the barrel or the. Uh, uh, coffee grain a lot better. I give it a two point seven five. Not terrible, but not outstanding. And uh, you know, but it would you know if you gave me a, a different bottle of Nico, would I would I be all over it? You better believe it. That's for sure. Um, Hoagie was asking about the. Um, I must admit, I'd love to mooch some Kilhoman and you got there on the table. Yeah, this was one I found at one of my favorite local shops. And they have um, some other red wine casks from local distilleries, which, which went and got a Kilhoman cask. And uh, one's called a Whiskey Barrel. There's a couple other distilleries that have their own like bottle like this. Uh, this is just the red wine cask matured, which is more of an international thing. But um, the... Uh, I'd love to try those other two that I saw up there. I might, they're under $100, so I might actually pick those up. This guy was about $1, 110 somewhere around there. Uh, this is a 50%, flat 50, 5 .0, and uh, it's the nice big American 750 milliliters, which I love. <laughs> it's got a great color, and it is, uh, I believe it's no chilled, yeah, no unchilled filtered and natural color, and that's very red. Now I'll tell you the thing about this guy that's really scaring me is a certain cask, and the reason I bring this up is I uh, tried a Octomore, which I do love. Octomore seven point one is one of the best drams I've ever had. The seven point three, and I've got the bottle actually right back there, the big white one right there. It's an Isle of Barley, but it's um, the cast they use is specifically from Portugal and it's called uh, Ribeiro do Duero. And ironically, this is also from the Duro Valley in Portugal. Um, the thing that's scary about the 7.3 Octomore is not the peat, it's that cask. It, it has like a, um, it makes it taste, taste like grape kid vitamins. It's weird. It's like some, one of my friends compared it to durian fruit, which is this like really obnoxious fruit they have in Southeast Asia um, and the people in I think China and Thailand some of those areas love this stuff but it's it stinks and it, it's extremely pungent like over the top like it makes that Ben Nivis you guys drink probably look pretty like mild that's this stuff is insane um, I, I don't think that would go to that level but it is that same kind of feel it I couldn't drink it. There's still a half bottle of that Octomore 7.3 back there, and I've had it for probably six months now at least, if not longer. And I usually, if I like something, I won't be around long. Um, but uh, thankfully, I have a friend that, that I actually gave a sample to locally here, and he loved it, and he uh, has been very uh, helpful and gracious and uh, generous, and I'm going to give him the bottle when I see him in the uh, – probably in April or so as a gesture, uh, you know, 
it's a, not a cheap bottle, but he's he's helped me out with a couple bottles here and there, and and uh, been very very nice. So uh, it's all even in the end, you know. <laughs> uh, red wine, uh, Hoagie says red wine cast are hit or miss. If it works, like Long Road Red, it's pretty good and unique. Yeah, I mean, I love a Burgundy cast. That that Spring Bank Twelve over there, that. Red wine cask is glorious. It it makes it taste like a, a New York cheesecake with extra syrup. I, I could dr drink that all day. It's it's even though it's strong, it's assertive. I still I still love it definitely. But uh, going back to the reviews, I hope the reviewers that are watching, you know, if you're not live, if you're watching after the fact, don't be afraid to tell you, you know, the people what you like and what you don't. I mean, just because you don't like something doesn't mean that you're bashing the distillery. Uh, I think it's more of a I just didn't enjoy the dram that much, you know. And just like this Octum War 7.3, I gave it three stars out of five, which is, you know, and the only reason I gave it three uh, was because I respect the, what they're doing and trying to do and uh, the people that do enjoy it. But that was the highest. Like, I mean, I might even give it a two. It, it was, I, I can't even, I can't drink it. It's that, it's that off putting to me. But, uh, like my friend and some other people I've, I've actually uh, shared it with have, have loved it. So it's all subjective, you know, if, if, if there's a certain flavor that you think is outstanding, the next guy might not mean because I like a sweet dram uh, back in like the Akintoshan three wood to me is, is good. And if I'm in the mood for it, some people think it's coyingly sweet and there's just no way it's just not their deal, but that's, you know, that's what makes the hobby so uh, fun is everyone is right <laughs> to an extent, I guess, unless you're talking technicalities of where something's made and how long it's casted for and all that, but whether or not it's pleasant, that's something you can't really argue with somebody over, but uh, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, I, the, the, I am looking forward to trying to make products though. So I'm not knocking the distillery by any means. Mm -mm. Just catching up with some comments here. George Kaplan is saying the 7.3 is very different than 6.3. Mine got better with time and a little water. Still remember what my brother said when he first tried it with me. I want to like it. Yeah, I, I, believe me, I spent like over $200 in that bottle. And I, the last thing I wanted to do was get a bottle like that. I thought I was going to love because I'm a big peat head. I love peat. And then get it, and the cast just kills me. I just, it's like the last thing you want to do, you know. But um, I might try it with Lee. Uh, I've got a friend named Lee that lives in Virginia, and he uh, he loves the stuff. So when I bring it, um, we're going to meet up with another friend named Paul and uh, go to a whiskey expo uh, sometime later on, and uh, just share a few bottles and, you know, maybe uh, I'll end up liking it more since it's been oxidized for quite a bit. Um, and I did, I did try it with neat. I tried it with a couple of drops. I tried it with a lot of water and man, I, I played with that dram for a while and it was like, it was work. It was like working at a quarry kind of work. It just, no, whatever I did, it just was not going to, it just wasn't going to be right. No matter how I addressed it. Cause it's just that cask, you know, I mean, certain casks, like the sad thing is, like I love a Marsala cask, I love an Amontillado cask, uh, Sauternes. Um, I mean, I can't even think of another cask that I didn't like. I like the Burgundy, I like the Port wine. Um, I can go on and on and on. I, I can't think of another one that I, I was not into. But that Rivera del Duero, man. I hope to God this one is not as. Uh, maybe it's the peat mixed with it. Hopefully, since this is a lighter peat than the Octomore, this will, you know, let's open it up and let it breathe, though, while we're thinking about it, because I can talk online about that. We're going to do a new glass. And uh, I did the Benevis 10 recently. If you missed me doing it live, check out my video. Uh, I was pre dreaming with the Risky Fabric before they did a round table and thought, well, I'll just, you know, pop open the Benevis pour these guys uh, their samples and uh, I'll have to do that with this next because I don't like having a, un, you know, I like having an unopened bottle to give, uh, to pour samples with. I don't like it being oxidized. I figure if people want to oxidize their stuff, they'll do it on their own. Ooh, that's nice. That heat is there. 
And the cool thing about this one, I'm getting bacon, pork belly, um, just like caramelization. I mean, wow. Let's see what we get here. Let's pour us a big one. <laughs> Let's pour us a do the Mark Broda, the Mark Broda swish. Oh my, that's good. That's like a Lagavulin in a way. Maybe this is going to be like the Stiller's edition. That would be good. I call that like a maybe a maybe a three finger pour. Let's see. Yeah, it's about three. It's not too bad. Oh wow. It's got some fruit. I definitely get um, get a bit of the uh, get a bit of that cask right off the bat. Representing Rush tonight. I'm not sure if there's any Rush fans out there, but uh, 2012 is a great album. Check it out. <laughs> wow, it's 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 an odd mix. It's like the first thing you get is bacon and pork belly and like that delicious juicy like that like just simmering on a hot wood stove it's i don't explain that part of that but uh but now you also i mean it's definitely gonna need to breathe for a while before we really do anything with it but now you get some uh really nice um not as deep as plums but Deeper than strawberries. Wow. I'm going to get a little water to cleanse the old palate here. It helps the nose too a bit. It's very it's 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 weird because out of the gate I gave you those notes and now I'm getting more delicate tones like a lot of more floral and fruit. My, I'm trying to think of how to describe the floral notes. Not herbal by any means. It's more vegetal, if anything else, but. Like roses, there's like roses in here. It's, it's bizarre, but there's also like um, not watermelon, but a deep red fruit that's not a strawberry, not a plum in the middle somewhere. If you could think of that, let me know. good it's it's like um i'm not a red apple either man i'm fighting with this maybe like a really sweet tomato like a like a, a very ripe cherry tomato big one though get a little coastal brine in there too man now, the nose does not disappoint at all. This is a very, very good nose. And if the palate is similar, then we're in for a great ride. If I get this Reveal de Duero, uh, Ribera del Duero cast, then, man, it's going to be a battle. I'm trying to remember the nose in the Octomore, if it was like this or not. I don't think it was as pleasant as this. Um, but did the uh, the cask reveal itself as far as what I was going to experience it off the nose? I don't think it did, and that's what I'm kind of nervous about. But hey, you know, it's like a nose it online and still be happy. <laughs> it's always good to have a good dram that you can make last quite a while, just by you know enjoying the nose at least for a bit, and before you slurp it down. <laughs> Makes your mouth water though. I mean, this is like a it's um it holds up it's got some uh got some legs in there um the 50 percent i'm sure is going to help a lot too um 
it looks like it's going to be an oily, nice mouth coat, but that's not always the case because the legs run pretty quickly on this guy, and that usually means it's not very thick. So I guess we should go in and take a look and see what we get here. Wow. That is good. <laughs> That is, I have to bow to that one. That's a good, that's a good dream. That is not what I experienced with the Octomore 7.3 by any means, which is a great thing for me. Wow. I can definitely taste the red wine. Um, the cask is there. Thankfully, it's not overbearing. The, the funny thing is I get more peat smoke barbecue than, I mean, it's, very well balanced with that red wine I was talking about. The sweet factor, the floral notes. There, it's it's. We're gonna have to tame this down just a little bitty bit with a couple drops. I and mean, we're talking. You'll see how many I'm I'm, I'm gonna do here. This is how little I like to put in. That's about it. We're talking like a. I call it a dime, dime size. Let that simmer down a little bit. I think it's really going to open this up even more, which it's already doing great neat. I mean, even for 50, which you would think would be hot, because 48 is like my sweet spot. But, um, wow. I'm going to have to give Cajon some, um, some bonus points. Uh, kudos on Twitter for this one. This is good. This is ironically, the first one I've reviewed. I did have... <laughs> this is how it tells you how good Cajon is. I had this in egg. I bought it um gosh uh three or four weeks ago i guess and uh it's gone <laughs> i would like to tell it it didn't last very long so i didn't even get a chance to do a proper review for it i'm sure i'll get it again though because it's probably my favorite next to this new guy i think it's my favorite but this guy is is getting up there this this is going to be maybe the next the new kingpin um my cure bay is good it's like i would consider like the core like their, I say bottom, but their entry, you know, level. I love one hundred percent. I love that one. It's a little too floral notes for me, and a lot of people like if you like the Isla barley from uh, Bro Brocladi, that kind of thing, you might love the one hundred percent Isla. That's just not my kind of dram. I like more of a peat or sherry um, influence deal. Um, and the uh, the Loch Gorm. That's another really good one. That's more of your Isla, typical like Ardbeg, Lafroy kind of uh, smoky, deep smoke, um, bog type, you know, taste. This is is a lot like the Lagavulin 16, but I, I'm, I'm going to go in again before I say it's better. But man, this is, this is I can't believe, because we don't know what the age is. I mean, it, it's a great color. I'm sure they do a great job with the cast, but I mean, this doesn't even have an age statement. So, I mean, it's not even 16 years. It's, it's, it can't even be 10 years. The, the distillery has only been around since, uh, gosh, um, 2007, I think is when they started, if I'm not mistaken. So they might be coming out with a 10 year soon. I know they have a vintage, 2009 and Adventures 2007, but uh, I don't think they've released a 10 year yet. So this guy's maybe nine years old, if I had to take a guess. And uh, let's go back before I make any more comments because I'm about to maybe overstep my bounds here. It's like if you think about a log of one 16 nose and you put a little more red fruit in it, kind of like if you took a Glentronic 12 and a Lagavulin 16 and blended it. That's what the nose is like to me. Maybe even the palate too. Let's go back and see. Yes, everyone. Uh, Kilhoma came out in 2007, I believe. Good to see you, Swami. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Uh, Swami, if you haven't had this red wine uh, cask matured bottle yet, if you haven't had this puppy yet, you've got to go get it, my friend. You will not be disappointed. It's my new favorite. 
Snake was my favorite before, so you might not want to go by what I say, because I know you weren't a big Snake fan, but um, I did love the little Gold Club Gorm. I do love these Makir Bay and the original cat strength I had recently. Peanuts, cashews, brittle, awesome, awesome sauce. Um, the only one I haven't liked, I won't say haven't liked, but haven't really got much uh, enjoyment out of as much is the 100% Isla. Uh, every other bottle I adore, and this one is right up there, probably my, my new top favorite and it really is it's like if you can imagine having um i want to say 70 to 80 percent lagavulin 16 and um like 30 you know 30 to 20 percent glentronic uh at least a 12 if not maybe they're 18 or 15 now, i know the 15 is not available anymore but a really strong sherry really uh, uh well rounded it, it's 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 like that Wow, that, that's that nose, man. Whew. Five years old, according to the web page. Well, oh, four years old. This thing is only four years old. Are you serious? Hold on. Here we go. You might be right, but oh, you're not discounting. I just want to make sure. Distilled in 2012. Uh, in 2012, so yeah, five, five, five to four. You're you're right, man. It does not taste like a four or five year old whiskey. I'm sorry, but I don't know what they're doing. I'm not sure if they're using like crazy electricity to to speed up the aging process, or if it's um. The finish is long too. Jeez, this is this is outstanding. Uh, it, it, it doesn't make sense because if we go by years, a four or five year old risky should not taste like a sixteen. You know, at least a twelve. I, I would I would equate it to like a Glendronic, maybe fifteen, and a Lager One Sixteen, like blended. It shouldn't taste like that, but it does. Uh, maybe it's it's I don't know. They're doing something right here, though. Maybe Swami can tell me how they're doing it because it's it's magic. There's something magical going on at Kilhoma. Yeah, Swami, if you know um, the secrets on how they're making the um, the young whiskey taste as good, I'd love to know. The finish is, um, it's got that earthy peat like a Laval 116. It, it, it's got the campfire, the, you know, there's oakiness in there still. And you also get the sherry finish. I mean, this is like, it's like torture almost. <laughs> oh, goodness. I don't want to stop drinking it. It's like, my goodness gracious. Swami says it's all rock side farm barley, best on earth. Well, it's got it's got to be something. It's got to be something. Um, I'm gonna look for rock side farm. I think Brook Lottie uses that farm as well, if I'm not mistaken. I think I've seen that uh, on a couple of their bottles. I'll have to um, go and search, uh, seek out the rock side farm, man, because that must be where heaven on earth is. <laughs> it's how good this stuff is. It's insane. Wow. And it's really sad because I don't know what the price point of this Nika Tuxer Pure Malt Blend was, but you couldn't be more far apart in quality. I mean, you, you couldn't be. It's it's this is like a four point seven five out of five versus like a two point five two point seven five. It's not even. It's like if these were like heavyweight fighters, it would be like Mike Tyson and Glass Joe. <laughs> it's that bad. <laughs> I'm going pulling out the old Nintendo references. <laughs> Showing my age. <laughs> wow. Uh, the price uh, Santa on the Kilhoman was uh, one ten. I want to say one hundred to one ten. One ten at the top, and very well worth it. I'd say. Uh, I know a lot of the one sixteen you can get for like eighty to ninety dollars uh, usually, but uh, 
If I could get this for 20 more, better ABV. I know it's not chill filtered. I know it's not colored. I know it's uh, at least four or five years old, which I know is crazy. I know it's not an age statement, but you know we know what we're getting. And um, the mouth coat is 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 better than I expected. Not overly heavy, but a nice medium round. It's that finish is 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 really good, man. Oh, there's and actually, and to top it off, all oh, there's there's dark chocolate in the end too. Wow, I I got a ton of notes on this guy. That's gonna I'm gonna have to go back through the video just to to do some uh, write my notes up for distiller.com. <laughs> It'll take me a while. It's, it's that it's, it's that good. I'm looking at the comments here. Oh, sounds like uh, Swami's talking about Kilhoman owns the farm, so they can't. Uh, Brooklady probably can't use it anymore. Wow, interesting. Is there a vintage on the bottle? Now I'm gonna have to. Look for that if there is one. Uh, tell me if, if I have to look at a cereal or cereal or something. It does say Isla's Farm Distillery on the bottom. Uh, let's see. Imported in San Francisco. Uh, oh my goodness. Now it says red wine cast matured from the Douro Valley, Portugal. Uh, still matured in a bottle by the Cajoman, 50%, 750. I don't see any vintage date, unfortunately. But uh, I think Koki's right. I think it's a four or five year old. But uh, it's quality. It is quality. Yeah, I mean, it's not colored, not chill filtered. Uh, everyone, uh, that's a good question on color. I guess that the. That's why I'm surprised if this is a four or five year old whiskey and it's, I mean, I know these casks are strong, but maybe that's the case. Um, maybe the difference between the Octomore 7.3 and this one, even though there's the same cask, maybe if you leave it in too long, because I know the Octomore is uh, seven years, I think it's 7.3 is a seven year-ish deal. Um, this is a little less, so maybe uh, it's such a strong cast that it, it affects it that quickly but color is a weird thing i mean red wine is is is, is pretty intense as it is so i mean if you poured a, a you know a duero wine i'm sure it would be as dark as you know a merlot or something so it's not really completely out of the norm that it's you know this could give you a a basis you know this is the this is a white give you like a, a good basis of the color it is a nice uh, deeper than amber I would say uh, not as dark as of course as a, a sienna or a brown or anything or sepia but like a golden brown I'd say I'm really gonna enjoy this one I gotta pour more samples so I can drink the rest of the bottle. <laughs> oh, he says you fresh wine casks infuse a lot of color into the whiskey. Also, most color absorbed by distillate in the first few years, not a steady process. Yeah, I got you. So in the first few years, I guess it really it's really getting in there. That makes sense. He had a chart somewhere like seventy or eighty percent of the color are extracted during the first two years or so. Not to be confused with the whole maturation process. Yeah, I see where you're going. So, you know, as long as you get two or three years, you know, in there, you're getting a lot of that color and a lot of the, maybe even the flavor. Um, hey, take care, um, George Kaplan. I appreciate you stopping by. Come back again for the next review. Uh, I typically do them on Thursday 11. Sometimes I pop up a surprise every once in a while. But uh, good luck to you, my friend, and uh, hope to see you again. So good, but well, we better be wrapping this up, guys. I really appreciate y'all stopping by. Um, 
and uh, I'm looking forward to doing more, a lot more of the Kill Homing. Um, there's just so many good drinks by them. Um, there's a couple oddballs out there I like to get my hands on. One was like a Santiago Bay, not the Moncure Bay, it was like called Salt, Saltago Bay or Santiago Bay, something like that. It's a blue label. I'd love to get my hands on that one. I did get lucky with a recent purchase. Um, you might see right there, there's a Springbank 14 Bourbon Wood. I couldn't believe I found it because it's been out of uh, production for a while. I got lucky and found that one recently. I'd like to do a, a review on that maybe soon. I'm trying to spread the love though, because I did do a, a Spring Bank 19 and a 12 already. Um, but um, I've got a Lafroig over there I could do, but I'm trying to save that bottle, so I might try to save that review for another one. But uh, maybe the next time I get a, a bottle of something, I'll try to get a Lafroig in there too. Um, but there's always uh, some independent love to spread around here too. In the back, you'll see some uh, new bottles back here that. Uh, we'll be taking a look at Glenn Turret, uh, Glenn Lossie, uh, Tormore, and uh, Glenn Keith. They're all like 21 year olds. So, uh, independent bottling, though, it's a crapshoot. You don't know what you're going to get, but hopefully, I'll get lucky. I know that Gordon McPhillips does, always does a pretty good job. Exclusive Malts guys are unreal. Those guys are great. I, I'm, I, I'd like to get a. I saw a 25 year old Holland Park cast strength. For like two seventy five, and I know that's pricey, but man, I bet that's outstandingly good. And the guy at the store was like, "Yeah, this is even better than the twenty five distillers version uh, because it's cast strength and exclusive malts always does a good job." So I might try to find that sometime if I'm feeling lucky. <laughs> anyway, well, thanks so much for stopping by, guys, and hopefully, uh, see you soon next time. Uh, Everyone, I'll see you nearby at work sometime. We'll have to talk about maybe trying to get together for one of the expos. Um, and anybody else, if you're going to be in D.C., um, March, April, that area, let us know, and hopefully we can meet up and uh, have a dram, shoot the stuff. <laughs> Cheers, Slanchava.